All right, well, thank you for allowing me to speak with you today. I'm excited to discuss how you can learn to influence inclusive design in the Power BI space. So to begin, I need to introduce you to someone. Some of you may know him. Meet Adam. This is Adam. Adam is a super cool guy. He's on the Power BI CAT team at Microsoft. He speaks at lots of conferences and fans line up to take photos with him. He has a very popular YouTube channel with thousands of subscribers. Adam is a trendsetter. When he shows how to make a report with buttons and bookmarks in a video or at a customer site, people watch him and start making reports with buttons and bookmarks just like his. So next I need to introduce you to someone else. His name is Kevin. Kevin is a great guy. He is currently the principal program manager at Century One, a company known for database monitoring software. Uh, he's been very influential in my SQL community and my career because he's one of the founding members of PASS and he's mentored and inspired lots of people in the SQL Server community. He's also a blogger and a speaker, and you might have seen him if you've ever uh, gone to a previous past summit or watched some of the virtual groups. He speaks at those. One other notable thing about Kevin is that Kevin is colorblind. He once told me that he has a hard time telling the difference between guacamole and peanut butter based on color alone. He said he was looking through pictures of his house growing up with his wife, and she started making fun of the avocado green appliances in the house he grew up in. This was a surprise to him because he never knew the appliances were avocado green, but it makes sense because it was the 70s. Kevin loves data. He likes using data to understand trends and comparisons. But he wishes that people like you and me and Adam would stop making reports that look like this. Because to him, they look like this. It takes him a lot of extra effort to understand reports when they only use color, specifically red and green to indicate status, which is very common. When Kevin receives a report like that, He's very gracious and he doesn't complain. He doesn't always tell people he's colorblind, but he isn't hiding it. He'll share his stories if you ask him. His daughter got him those in chroma glasses that help you see color last year. And he tweeted out the video of him uh, trying them out and it was really cool. Kevin has an invisible disability. An invisible disability is a condition that limits a person's movements or activities that's not apparent to other people. Um, it's often misunderstood by others as well. But Kevin is part of the one in 20 men that have color vision deficiency, which is the more technically accurate name for color blindness. You probably don't realize that from meeting him though. It's important to remember that just because someone is not using a wheelchair or a cane or a screen reader, that doesn't mean that that person doesn't have a disability. And some people don't wanna disclose their disabilities to coworkers. They may be quietly suffering or having to expend extra energy to get their work done, but they aren't required and sometimes don't wanna tell you about it. So all that means that we can't assume that our intended audience for our reports are free of any disabilities, even if we think we know them. So I wanna share a few statistics with you. One in five people in Europe has a disability. That comes out to about 100 million people. That's a lot of people. Not all of those people can get a job because jobs don't accommodate them. So I went and looked up the stats for the Netherlands. And in the Netherlands, people without disabilities uh, are have a 
of what's considered the labor force have a job, essentially. Those with disabilities, it's only 43% that are actually participating in, in the labor force. Uh, if you look at the EU as a whole, barely half of all people with disabilities in the EU are employed compared with an employment rate of 75% for everyone else. So it's probably not surprising to learn that more of a quarter, sorry, more than a quarter of people in the EU are at risk of poverty. If we look at younger people, the, the number of people in the Netherlands with a disability ages 15 to 24 is growing. So it's not like, oh, well, the population is aging and those people don't work in tech. Young people have disabilities too. I couldn't find statistics for Europe, but I'm gonna share with you some statistics from the US that are probably roughly the same. In the US, out of employees that have disabilities, 62% have the invisible kind, meaning you can't tell that they have a disability just by looking at them or talking to them. At least a third of those people that have disabilities experience discrimination or negative bias. So you can understand why they might be hesitant to, to announce their disability and request some kind of accommodation. They get misunderstood. This could be in the form of coworkers assuming they can't do a task or will take a really long time to do this task. But because of this, they don't ask for what they need to do their job and to be productive and happy at work. Not only can we affect this in our little portion of the world, because the Power BI team is so receptive to feedback and because we have such a strong community where we can share information and influence each other, we can actually um, help make our community and the tool one of the most inclusive tools around. So for me, Power BI is arguably the most accessible low-code tool out there, and it's largely due to the keyboard accessibility within a report, but even within a visual, and I'll show you that a little later. But the last time I checked, most tools like Tableau, they make screen reader and keyboard accessible filters but they don't have that interactivity um, programmed in a way that's accessible to a lot of people. So they treat all their visuals as if they are just static images and throw some alt text on there and then you're done. But in Power BI, keyboard users can cross filter the visuals. They can interact just like I would with a mouse. They can get to the underlying data. They can uh, change filters. We even have dynamic alt text now. And a lot of effort has gone into making Power BI very accessible, but almost none of the demos and examples we see that we make as community members, that I make as part of the MVP program, I try, but if you go back in my history far enough, I'm sure I have an inaccessible demo that even Microsoft produces. We're not making our reports um, in an accessible way. So I don't think that everyone's going around going, ha, I'm gonna make all these reports inaccessible and unreadable by everyone but perfectly abled people. But I do think that we're kind of horribly unaware of how other people work and how that may differ from our own work habits. And at the end of the day, whether we intentionally made an inaccessible report or not, our reports and demos are inaccessible. So this is entirely fixable. Um, we have a great product that allows us to build fairly accessible reports. And basic accessibility can just be worked into our design habits. I'm talking to you because as someone who attends this type of, of uh, session, you're part of the community. You can make other people feel seen and you can make it trendy to build accessible reports. So think about this. Someone who is colorblind 
sees report after report using red, yellow, green icons and tables or pink and green backgrounds and KPIs in every demo and every report. And then one day you show something that provides an alternative. Maybe it uses a blue to orange color scale instead. Uh, maybe it switches the icons to have different shapes. You have no idea how happy you've made that colorblind person. <laughs> they can start copying that technique and suggest that other people do that as well. So how do we actually build accessible reports? We need to take a page from inclusive design. Um, inclusive design is, well, it's used for really everything now, but it, it that terminology is used a lot in web design, but it works really well for Power BI. And at the end of the day, Power BI reports get published to the web. So uh, we can we can follow this pattern. And Microsoft actually has a whole site about inclusive design where they share their definitions, their, uh, their pillars that I'm going to talk about in a second. So follow Microsoft's lead. Um, we need to understand that People are diverse and people who can't use our reports are not just some edge case we don't care about. We need to classify them as real valid use cases. So the way to approach inclusive design is to first that uh, recognize that exclusion happens when we solve problems using our own bias. So what happens is we build reports for us. Um, it looks good to me, must work for everybody else. And as report designers, we need to seek out those exclusions. We need to be asking questions and watching how people use our reports to find out what opportunities we have to create new ideas and more inclusive designs. Designing for inclusivity not only opens up our products and our services to more people, it actually reflects how people really are. And everyone has abilities and limits to our abilities. So designing for people with permanent disabilities actually results in designs that benefit people universally. This is called the curb cut effect. And then the third thing is just to remember that people are actually the real experts. We need to value the feedback that we get from users and people who are adapting to diversity. So inclusive design, user-centered design kind of has a bad name in design circles right now, but inclusive design puts people at the center of the process so that we can get fresh perspectives from them and get quicker insights to make our reports better so that they deliver insights. When we talk about report design, um, we tend to focus on visual, but I want us to recognize that there are actually four main areas of accessibility. There may not be much audio in our reports, but I have seen people make dashboards and include a video uh, or a link to a podcast when they're making kind of educational things. So we want to be aware that reports can be made with sound and that's part of accessibility as well. Uh, we want to make sure that people who use a keyboard instead of a mouse can use our reports. And we want to make sure that people who have a hard time uh, reading and remembering things or making decisions can use our reports. So when I talk about accessibility in Power BI, I tell people there are three categories of accessibility features. First, there's the built-in stuff, no effort by the report creator required. That would be something like, um, keyboard accessibility. Those keyboard shortcuts, which I'll demo in a second, are, are built in. You don't have to do anything to turn them on. Then we have built in things that require some configuration. That would be like alt text. We need to add alt text to our visuals. There is a place in Power BI to add alt text, but we need to go in and actually populate that box. And then there are things that Power BI doesn't offer a lot of help with, but we should still be doing them. There's just nothing built into the tool. 
So we're going to tackle each category and I'll show you some demos and we'll pause for questions. The first thing that is part of that built in uh, set of features is just general keyboard navigation. I can actually go into a Power BI report and cross filter, select things in slicers, all without using a mouse. They have a whole list of keyboard shortcuts that are available for people to, to reference. And then you can start using reports with just a keyboard. I actually think long term that people could get to where they use keywords for uh, Power BI navigation, kind of the way people who are really good in Excel know all the keyboard shortcuts, because sometimes it's just honestly easier, especially when things are overlapping. The second thing is high contrast colors view. If you are, if you have your your Windows machine or uh, you can actually choose this in the browser set to be high contrast. A lot of times you'll see like the dark background with bright yellow or green uh, for text and, and content that is built into Power BI. So when someone with this setting on goes to powerbi.com, it will automatically detect it and they can turn the report into the high contrast view. It's also screen reader compatible. And so it was originally tested with JAWS, which is a very popular screen reader, but you have a built-in screen reader um, in Windows or on a Mac. And in Windows, Narrator is, uh, is your screen reader. And so Power BI has been updated to also work with Windows Narrator. And then they're also hiding an accessible show data table that's made specifically for screen readers. And then finally, you may be familiar with focus mode. Focus mode, you think it's just a normal feature, but focus mode can be an accessibility feature because it gets rid of all of the distracting things around a chart so that someone can focus and actually just read that one chart. So I'm going to switch over to Power BI. And I'm going to show you the keyboard accessibility that is built in. So I'm just hitting tab. And you can see there's a bright blue box around the visual that I'm navigating to. So if I go back and choose this bar chart, I can actually choose an individual bar and let it cross filter. Then I can navigate back out and continue to the next one. And then maybe I want to go to, this is the accessible show of data table. So it kind of looks like in focus mode, but that table at the bottom is specifically formatted to use the correct HTML to be readable by a screen reader. So someone that's blind or low vision can actually have it navigate that table really easily because screen readers tend to have um, special features where they recognize that there are columns and column headers and they can either read all the way across or read down so they understand the HTML structure of a table. So then I can go back and I'll show you if you hit um, shift question mark it will show you all the keyboard shortcuts. So how do I get across pages? How do I expand or collapse tables? How do I get inside a visual and do what I just did where I selected a specific bar? It allows you to multi-select. Um, you can go into, I don't have a slicer on this page, but you can go into a slicer and then choose a value. So that's one of the built-in features. Next up, built-in features requiring configuration. I mentioned alt text earlier. And now we can actually use conditional formatting to populate our alt text. And I'll show you what that looks like and why I think that's cool. Another thing we need to be aware of is tab order. Tab order, you just saw me tab through the visuals. Tab order is available for you to set, but is not automatically set. 
by default tab order is the order in which you placed the visual on the page. Now, I don't know about you, but when I build Power BI reports, I kind of randomly put some things there and then figure out exactly, you know, where they might be, or I might, you know, delete something and re-add it as a different chart. So the default tab order is not going to help keyboard users and screen reader users. You need to go in and set that. Um, chart titles are actually an accessibility feature as well, because if you can tell me with a nice descriptive chart title, what I should expect in the chart. If I'm someone that requires extra effort to read the chart, I can decide, do I want to spend that time really looking into detail in the chart or do I want to move on? So if you've been in some kind of data viz class or if you read storytelling with data, she often tells you to write your chart titles as a conclusion. That's really helpful for people who it might take extra effort to read or interpret your visuals. And again, there you can do some of the conditional formatting, meaning use a DAX uh, measure to populate your chart titles so that you could still have a conclusion, even if your report is constantly refreshing and you're getting new data. You can also use header tooltips. So we have normal tooltips where we hover over a chart. But header tooltips give us that little question mark in the header of our visuals. And so we can add helpful information, which works for people with cognitive disabilities. If we need to give someone more information to help them understand what data means or how to interpret the chart, then that can be an option there. And it is keyboard accessible as well. So I'm going to show you. <laughs> I realized that I'm for some reason using traffic and car related demos today. So <laughs> all of my demos are either parking violations or traffic accidents, and it wasn't done on purpose. Um, I'm going to show you alt text for this parking ticket summary, which is the enlightened data story visual. And right now, I just have, I've copied basically the text into my alt text box and that's okay um i realized i did not start zoom it that's okay but what happens if i update this and it's now no longer 2015 through 2018 and it updates every month well then my alt text can't be static like that so i have two options i can change this to be just a description of the chart without actual numbers, or I can make it dynamically populated. It's perfectly fine to do the description thing. What you want to be aware of is when a screen reader reads your visual, it's going to read the title. So if I'm looking at this bar chart, why parking tickets were used, it'll announce that. And then it'll announce the chart type, like stacked bar chart, and then it will read your alt text. So we want to make sure that we're giving information that isn't already in the title. So if it's reading the title, what's your kind of one to two sentence description of what's in the chart? What's your um, kind of subtitle, if you will? So I can go in and under general, there's this alt text box. And I can put in my static text like I have or I can click the FX button. And then my only option will be field value. But I can use this DAX calculation to populate it. So it'll show just like any other conditional formatting over there that now it's got, it's using a, a formula. So if I find my alt text, I'm just um, concatenating some numbers. So I'm gonna, whatever my, my chart is, in this case, I'm working on the park ticket summary. I'm just saying, hey, I have this many tickets that were issued with this total of fines because the screen reader can't read the, the actual visual. It's not gonna get this information if somebody can't see it. They're going to get some version of what we see in the 
Alt Shift F11, the screen reader can read the part at the bottom, which is way one less interesting, has no commentary or editorial design from the report creator, but also requires you know keyboard clicks and then you have to get back out. So if you can use alt text to tell someone what the information in the chart is, then do that. And if you can actually put the numbers in there for charts that have like a summary number or some, some um, conclusion that you'd like to share, then that's even better. I mean, it's DAX, so there's a small performance penalty to doing some of that, but so weigh that, but those are your options. Either static and actually put the numbers in, um, just provide a general description without mentioning actual numbers and let the user kind of drill in or keyboard shortcut in to the data, or use DAX formulas. And then we get to DIY accessibility features. The first step is color contrast. Have you ever looked at a report and gone, that's kind of hard to read because the background was busy or it was like light gray text on a white background. There's nothing in Power BI right now to help you with that, but that's actually a really big deal. Um, you can also work to use colorblind friendly colors. So I mentioned, you know, using red and green with no other indicator of meaning isn't very helpful for colorblind people. There are also other color combinations. It's not just red and green. Um, so you, there's nothing in Power BI to help you, but there are third party tools to help you with this as well. And then I put report themes in here because once you get a good um, color palette, that has good color contrast and is colorblind friendly, then you can make a report theme with that in there and reuse that across reports. So you don't have to recheck all of this every time. So I'm gonna show you a tool that I like a lot for planning my color palette. This is Adobe Color. Um, when you land on it, you can choose accessibility tools. So it will actually help you plan a color palette up to five colors um, and make sure you don't have any conflicts. So right now, I have conflicts between three colors. When there's a conflict, I have a line um, in the box where, where there's a conflict. So I can move, if I move that green towards orange, I've alleviated the conflict. So from a color blindness perspective, I've now improved my, um, my color palette. There's a couple more things in here. It's got sliders to help you adjust um, lightness. You can change the RGB values, but it's also got this color blindness simulator down here. So, Deuteranopia and Protonopia are way more common than Tridonopia. One is green blind, red blind, and then blue blind. So I have to decide, it's gonna tell me, you know, this is col color safe or conflict free, but sometimes I still need to look down here and realize, you know, B and D look pretty different to me, but they don't for someone with Tridonopia or, maybe A and C look a little too close there. It can be really hard to get good color contrast and colorblind friendly colors. So I usually go for making sure that it looks okay for deuteranopia and protonopia, the top two. And if I can get tridonopia, that's a bonus, but that's pretty, it's a much rarer condition. So, I mean, always go for all three, but if you have to choose, that's the order in which you should prioritize. So that was the Adobe accessibility tools, which is color.adobe.com slash create. And then they've actually got a lot of tools that are good for color palettes, but once you click on accessibility tools, it'll be this URL. So I have a checklist, but I'm actually going to oh, move this over here. And check for questions real quick. <laughs> I 
Yeah, I had a question myself, uh, Megan. Okay. Um, I'm, I was wondering if I can um, use the smart narrative visual for the alt text, but uh, it, it might be that it's also uh, quite the same as the custom visual that you were using. So. Yeah, I believe I haven't tested it for alt text specifically, okay. but I believe it's going to act just like the custom visual and that you need to add your own alt text to it. Yeah. So, so only that the, part. Yeah, so only the visual itself is then. Um, uh, um, yeah, yeah, the custom, visual custom, itself yeah, is, yeah. is okay. offering the data, but it doesn't have a way to put that same data in the alt text, from my understanding. I know that they are working on text boxes in general and increasing the accessibility so you don't have to like go into them into another, you know, with another keyboard shortcut. So I think that as they fix regular text boxes, they're actually also fixing the smart narrative. So I expect that to show up in the not so distant future. OK, that would be great. All right. So I have a report accessibility checklist for interactive Power BI reports on my website. And it I've been updating it for the last two years. And so the way I have it organized is things you should do for all visuals. For all visuals, we want to pay attention to color contrast. We want to replace any unnecessary jargons or acronyms. And then there are some things that are specific to a visual type. So slicers, text boxes. And then what do you do about visual interactions and tool tips? What do you do if you're embedding video or audio using shapes? specific things to think about if you're using custom visuals and then just across your report pages in general. At the bottom of this, I have a list of the accessibility features that we're talking about today and then some tools listed to check accessibility. So I've already shown you the Adobe stuff for color, but there's also sites um, like who can use and VizCheck and Coblis for checking color vision deficiency kind of after the fact. Like, what do I, what does my report look like to a Deuter note? Or can I really use these two colors together? So there's a list of all of these tools there, as well as stuff for low vision. The color contrast analyzer has to do with low vision. So feel free to visit that and get all the links to resources from there. So there was a lot of stuff in that list. Um, accessibility is still tedious right now in Power BI, but it's because Power BI has actually enabled us to make reports that are fairly accessible, whereas other tools haven't quite ventured this far yet. So if you're thinking, oh man, I can never, never do all of those things on every report, I have kind of my top five list. So here's the bare minimum things that you should do. This is the where you start to form your accessible design habits. And the first one is ensure your charts and text have sufficient color contrast. This is can can I distinguish text or bars in a bar chart from the background? And I'll demo that in a minute. The second is to make sure you're using those descriptive, purposeful chart titles. Don't just let Power BI auto populate the chart titles. Put something useful in there so that it tells people what's in your chart or what conclusion they should draw from your chart. Number three is to avoid using color as the only means of conveying information. When we design for colorblindness, we don't say, oh, you can't use color. You can never use red and green. The idea is if you're going to use color to indicate meaning, you can't only use color. So if I'm doing KPIs, red and green icons in a table, I want to make sure I'm choosing the ones where red is a square, yellow is a triangle, and green is a circle. Or I want to have the number or a status text description along with the color so that people who can see the color can enjoy and use the color and people who can't still get the same information. I also want to set tab order on all the visuals on each page. So I told you earlier, tab order 
by default is not useful. It's whatever you put on the page in that order. Um, you want to go back and change it so it makes kind of in Western cultures a Z pattern. So we start at the top left, work our way to the right, then go to the next row and go across so that we end in the bottom right. And then we want to remove our unnecessary jargon and acronyms. We all work in different organizations where they're or just learning the Microsoft acronyms can be enough. Um, it can be overwhelming when people are starting new jobs. It doesn't even have to be really um, straight, you know, disability. When you first joined, Alex jo got a new job not too long ago, and he had to learn all of their jargon and acronyms. And if they're not explained, some people will never ask because they don't want to look dumb. They don't want to look like they they don't know something they feel like they should have known. On top of that, there's cognitive accessibility in there. If you make someone have to go and ask or go and look up terminology, they've lost their focus on your report. So we want to make it so that somebody can use our reports and not have to leave and go look at other things that are not directly related to their analysis. So I'm going to open my other traffic related report. And this is about um, traffic accidents in Denver. I moved to Denver about four years ago, and the traffic here is so much worse than where I came from. And so I pulled some free data from, from Denver's open data site, and I put this together. And there are some problems with this report. It's not very accessible. So if you take a look at this page, you might notice that it's kind of hard to read the days of the week. All of my axes are really light. I've got kind of a pale, gray uh, background behind it. But what if I just go in and make it a little darker? And I don't even really need to be scientific about it. Changing that just makes it pop so much more and it's so much easier to read. So what if I do the same and I'll do the x-axis this time? Just compare the x-axis to the y-axis. I have pretty good eyesight, but that makes a big difference even for me. So just for people that stare at screens all day, they'll appreciate the increased color contrast. And I just eyeballed that because clearly that's too light, but I can actually measure that. So I'm gonna pull up my color contrast analyzer. And this is a free tool that I'll share the link to in a moment where I can actually check that. And so there are different guidelines for text versus non-text content. For example, non-text would be this bar. I want non-text content to have a contrast ratio of three to one. The text content should be 4.5 to 1, depending on the size of the text, but generally that's what we go for. So I can measure these blue bars. These blue bars don't have enough uh, contrast from the background. So I just need to make them a little darker. And it often isn't a big change. And I cheated and just made these colors manually, but. If I just made it that much darker, that's probably going to be a big change. Yeah, four to one in color contrast. So there are lots of tools that will let you grab, do the eyedropper and get the color. And then you can go to a website and plug them in and see what the contrast ratio is. But I like this little desktop app because I can do it all right here. So if I'm fixing this report, I want to make sure all of my axes have good color contrast and I'm actually just going to grab that color 
and put it in this time. So my axis text compared to the background has a contrast ratio of 1.9 to 1. And what we want it to actually be is 4.5. So we're way, way off. But in this handy dandy tool, I can um, adjust it with these sliders until I get to 4.5 to 1. And then that would be the lightest color that is acceptable on this background. Oops. And so that's okay. I tend to try not to use actual white and actual black because they're the largest color contrast. So they can be kind of stark if you're looking at those for a long time, but almost black and just slightly off white are kind of go-to colors because if those layered on top of each other have really good contrast. So that was our color contrast. Um, we want to, I'm going to go, oh, actually, I'm going to do tab order here. So here is a report where I didn't set the tab order yet. It's kind of a mess. Like, you couldn't read a report this way. So I need to open my selection pane. And if we look at the selection pane, it defaults to layer order, but we can switch it to tab order. And when you select something here, it'll show you which, which thing it's on in case your text box doesn't have a name, that type of thing. So I want my title first, then I want that text box, and then I might want the buttons first. So I need to find the top button and I could rename these buttons. So time button and put that there. and so on. And then we kind of want it to go across the top row and then to the bottom chart. So now that I've taken, what, 10 seconds and me talking through it to rearrange that, oh, I missed the button. I can test that real quick and find if there's any mistakes like that. And now it's gonna go through in the correct order. So that is tab order. And I'm gonna switch pages here. And this is just a page about what conditions were present when an accident occurred. And there's a couple issues here. Um, the first one is that I'm trying to indicate something here with these blue bars, but this doesn't help people who can't see color. So I have a couple options. I could maybe insert a shape, maybe a line or a star. So I could do something and I'll change the color in a second. Something like that, and then I'll have to put alt text in to explain why that's there. Or you could use, you know, a different shape and put a little indicator next to those. Or, and what's probably more practical, is I have a really horrible chart title here that got auto-populated by Power BI. So I might just go in and change my title to be more descriptive and remove the jargon and terminology that came from the data set that isn't necessarily how we talk and just say um careless oops carless <laughs> carless driving careless driving and following closely cause most then i can go and turn word wrap on Even though someone may not be able to see the color, they're getting the point because I'm pointing them to it from the title. 
And I've removed some weird jargon uh, in the process. So that was most of our five. We did color contrasts, we fixed chart titles, um, we found ways to avoid using color as the only way, way to convey information. We set our tab order and we ended up in the process removing some random jargon. So the tool that I used for that was Color Contrast Analyzer. Um, it is a free download. So if you want to get your hands on that, that's become my go-to go -to tool for color contrast. I don't see any other questions so far. So I'm going to keep going. Um, we often think of people with permanent disabilities like color blindness or the loss of a limb when we think about accessibility. And I hope I've been kind of mentioning throughout this that there are other, other reasons to design inclusively. And a disability can be temporary or situational as well. So have you ever been in a bright room trying to browse a report where reflections from lights and things uh, affected the readability? Or have you pulled up a report on your phone while you're in a parking lot so you could quickly check a number? How about when you started a new job or were learning English as your second language and had to read information with a bunch of acronyms in it and organizational lingo that no one had told you about? Or you had a fight with your partner, child, dog, and found it difficult to concentrate that day. Making these reports more accessible helps with all of those scenarios. And adding accessibility to your design habits now means that you don't have to go back and retrofit all of your reports later when an accommodation is needed. So let's say your manager leaves and you get a new manager. And that new manager is colorblind. How many reports do you need to go back and fix so that it's not using color combinations that are not distinguishable for them? It's not just altruistic to say, oh, we should help people with disabilities. It's good business process as well. So I have one more person for you to meet. And his name is John. This is John. He's a DBA with a bat. He works with me at Denny Cherry and Associates Consulting. John has MS, multiple sclerosis. He doesn't talk about it much, but you'll see him make a comment about health insurance or the cost of medication on Twitter every once in a while. Or sometimes he blocks his schedule so that he can go to a doctor's appointment. But his MS is largely under control. But what he will tell you is that he could have a flare up any day and it could last for a few days. That might mean he has increased fatigue, difficulty concentrating, uh, blurred or double vision, and even muscle spasms. So when I make reports, I want to make sure that they're keyboard accessible with good color contrast and helpful chart titles. If John wants to work during a flare up, he can, and I want him to be able to use the Power BI reports I make for my company to get the information he needs. So building accessible reports is a bit of a resilience technique to keep him productive in addition to the altruistic motive of he is my friend and I don't want him to be frustrated. So I have a proposal for you. As people who create Power BI reports, this is what I hope to see our community move towards. If you are building a demo, maybe you're presenting a session just like this, and it's not, it's maybe it's a DAX session, so it's not inherently visual. Fix your accessibility for the five bare minimum things or add a disclaimer, just say, Here's a cool DAX technique that I just threw into a quick table or bar chart to show you the results. 
It hasn't been cleaned up and made accessible with alt text and color contrast, but I want you to see this DAX technique. If you're actually demonstrating report design techniques, but you're only showing part of the process, do that bare minimum five things, or again, add a disclaimer. This is the part of the report creation process about bookmarks. And before I publish to an audience, I wanna make sure I'm following good design practices, including accessibility. That's all it takes. I've built some demos where I literally just put a text box in there and said, you know, this isn't a finished product. This is to show you this stuff. That's all it is. But if you're going to produce an entire finished report and say, look at my nice report, then you need to actually fix your accessibility. Go through my whole checklist, not just the bare minimum. Because here's the deal. If you make a cool report, and I have some people on this call, I have seen some, some really interesting reports come from them. People are going to try to follow what you did. They're going to go, that looks really cool. I'm going to do that. And they're going to copy you exactly. And they won't have the context of it being unfinished if you don't tell them, put a disclaimer on it, or just fix your accessibility. So they'll go around doing this cool but inaccessible thing because they want to be like you. So we have just a couple minutes left. And I have one last thing to show you. but I. So I'm going to ask you to get ready to share thoughts about my proposal, but I'm going to share the last part first since we just have a couple minutes. The last person that I want to talk about is my dad. My father has a lot of health problems and he has glaucoma, so he can't see very well. He says it's like putting a sheet over his in front of his face with a couple holes poked out. And so he's just trying to look through there as best he can. He was losing his vision when I was a child. So there are lots of now funny, then not so funny stories about him, you know, burning a tablecloth at my birthday party because he was losing a uh, feeling in his fingers and he couldn't see and he was trying to light candles. He spilled a drink on my friend. Um, he stopped working full time and driving, thank God when I was 12 years old. But the reason he stopped driving was because um, he turned into the yard instead of the driveway because he was having a really bad vision day and he couldn't see. So he's had it kind of rough. And he used to be, we used to build computers together when I was little. We had an older one and, and he would get parts and he was very tech savvy. But now because of his loss of vision and feeling in his fingers, he basically just downloads every virus on the internet and then calls me for tech support or the neighbors when I get tired and <laughs> can't help. But my dad got some new tools. So he has the high contrast keyboard. That's that thing, the, the bright yellow. And he has what's called a Topaz OCR machine. So it's actually text to speech. It OCRs any physical thing you put underneath it and then reads it out loud. It can also magnify it up to like 100x or something ridiculous. So he learned how to use Windows speech recognition and the Zoom text app. Um, so he can use Excel and Word once again. He learned the keyboard shortcuts because it was recommended as being easier than a touch screen or a mouse for him. And now he can use his computer. He just changed a couple of things about how he works and he went from giving up on using his computer, he literally turned it off and just didn't use it for a couple months there, to being productive. He makes lists and, and keeps track of his medications in Excel and can use lots of programs now that he's got his system down there. So communicating data is so important in organizations today. And we told people with Power BI that we were democratizing data and making analysis available to everyone. And Power BI is in a state where we can do that, but the final missing piece is producing accessible Power BI content. So, I would love if you would keep in touch with me, if you want to send comments or questions or just help create awareness and think about my 
proposal or just do your part and do my bare minimum accessibility steps in the next report you create, which is listed on my blog as well with just the five steps. So I know we're coming up on time and that's all I have. Any final questions, comments? Do we like the proposal? Never going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really like them, um, uh, Megan. They're, they're really great, I think. Yes, I, I, I never really think about, um, well, all the things you, you mentioned. So I think it's uh, quite learnful uh, for me. Um, and I will try to uh, um, incorporate uh, the, the proposal uh, for sure. Great. Well, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no problem. So if we uh, don't have any other questions, then um, I would like to thank you uh, um, for giving the session. And um, well, it may be a bit different than, um, than what we're used to, it, um, but it was an excellent session and uh, I, I learned a ton. So that's uh, really great. Great. Thank you. Um, so thank you 